welcome back to my channel my name is prachi sharma and i'm so glad the paper is finally over and i'm getting so many good responses from you all students i am definitely sure that you all did amazingly well but still let's take a look at the answers and try and understand our mistakes and get an idea of where our average marks may lie in so without wasting any time let's get started all right students let's get started with today's session now my target is to keep this video very short and sweet because i do not want you to waste a lot of time on understanding what you've already done in the examination and i know you need time to focus uh, back on the next exam coming up so we'll keep this short and sweet so that you get an idea about what were your mistakes and still you don't waste a lot of time lingering on the mistakes so let's quickly get started with the first question question 1 is an element in period 3 whose electron affinity is 0 so we did this question in one of the sample paper that we solved in the in on the channel also so this question was directly there so if you think about this in period 3 the only uh, element with electron uh, electron affinity as 0 would be um an inert inert gas so in the period 3 the only inert gas that lies would be argon so your answer is argon an element with the largest atomic radius among the following is what so uh, all of these if you think about carbon nitrogen lithium beryllium all four lie in the same period and as we go along the period the atomic size reduces so any element that lies up front will have the largest size so in this case lithium comes first therefore lithium will have the largest atomic radius let's move to the next one the compound that is not an ore of aluminum so sometimes when students face a problem that they do not recognize all of them or they do not know the name the meaning of all of them in that case always try um an approach which is also known as elimination technique so elimination technique helps you eliminate the answers that you know for sure are wrong for example bauxite fluorspar and cryolite all three are parts uh, play parts in the extraction of aluminum so that means they are definitely related to aluminum in some some way so your answer for this would be corundum now fourth one what is the vapor density of ch3oh the formula for vapor density is molecular mass divided by 2 so first we'll calculate the molecular mass so c is 12 then 3 of h is then 12 then 6 then oh sorry not 12 then 16 for oxygen plus 1 so if we calculate that that becomes 32 so 32 divided by 2 gives us 16 so answer is c let's move to the next one which of the following reactions takes place at the anode during the electroplating of an article with silver so at anode um, silver comes in and it uh, loses one electron and gives you uh, ag plus okay so which one of that matches here so that is ag minus one electron gives you ag positive that is the first one moving on to the sixth question the metallic hydroxide which forms a deep inky blue solution with excess of ammonium hydroxide solution is what so i have always said that whenever you see <clears throat> whenever you see that a blue solution comes into the picture always think about copper and if you are getting an option around that that is your answer so your answer is copper hydroxide an example of cyclic organic compound that is benzene benzene is an example of cyclic organic compound moving ahead to eighth question in the lab preparation of hcl gas is dried by passing through it is pa it is dried by passing through concentrated sulfuric acid let's move to the ninth one the nitrate which on thermal decomposition leaves behind a residue which is yellow when hot and white when cold is lead nitrate moving on to the next one the salt formed when concentrated sulfuric acid reacts with kno3 above 200 degree celsius so as long as you are below 200 degree celsius you get uh, k2so4 as as soon as you go above 200 degree celsius you get khso4 so your answer is c khso4 next is the 9 uh, uh, yeah the 11th one the property exhibited uh, by concentrated sulfuric acid when it is used to prepare hydrogen chloride gas from potassium chloride 
so we have also done this question and i clearly mentioned that these type of property questions definitely come from sulfuric acid so your answer for that is d that is non volatile acid property next is the hydrocarbon formed when sodium propanoate and soda lime are heated together so in that case your answer will be ethane your answer is ethane let's move to the next one the acid which does not form acid salt by a basic radical that is carbonic acid so you have h2co3 moving on to the next one the general formula of hydrocarbon uh, with single covalent bond is what so that is cn h2n plus 2 so which one is that that that's the first one itself the indicator which changes to pink color in an alkaline solution is what now a lot of students were confused with this because they say that purple color comes in with chloroethylene so we were not sure about that so if you are not sure definitely go with your elimination technique so do you think blue litmus or red litmus can ever be towards pink so the answer is no then methyl orange it will change to reddish or yellowish it doesn't come anywhere close to pink so that means methyl orange is eliminated so your closest answer to pink is purple that is what phenolphthalein shows so your answer is phenolphthalein let's move to the next one so match the column a and b so the first is sodium chloride so sodium chloride being an electrovalent compound will have high melting and boiling point so that is this one then methane is a greenhouse gas so that is this one hydrogen chloride gas that will have low melting and boiling point then oxidation reaction is number 5 then uh, water water will have two shared pair of electrons so that is your number 1 moving ahead to the next one the following uh, sketch illustrate the process we have also done this question as important questions uh, from aluminium uh, from metallurgy so this question was there the following sketch illustrates the process of conversion of alumina to aluminium study the diagram and answer the following questions name the constituent of the electrolyte mixture which has a divalent metal in it so what will you have let me write that so you will have alumina as 20% you will have cryolite at 60% and you will have fluorspar at 20% so the, this is your co uh, constituents of the electrolyte the three name the powdered substance x sprinkled on the surface of the electrolyte mixture so that will be powdered coke they have only asked the name so you do not really have to give the details as to why you are using it next is what is the name of the process the name of this entire process is hall thurlow's process write the reaction taking place at the electrodes y and z cath uh, z that is cathode respectively so let's write the reactions uh, i'll just write it here so at uh, when we talk about at cathode you just have one reaction happening that is four of aluminiums are losing uh, are losing a uh, gaining electrons so that is 12 electrons and that will give you four aluminiums okay so this is what is happening at cathode but at anode multiple things are happening so let's look at anode so at anode first off you will have oxygen ion which will again lose electrons and which will give you six nascent oxygen once you have six nascent oxygen three nascent oxygen and three nascent oxygen will combine to give you three oxygen molecules so that will give you 3o plus 3o giving you 3o2 this is one set of things happening at anode another thing happening at anode would be with carbon so you'll have carbon plus oxygen this oxygen that you just got these will combine to give you 2co so two of carbon combining with two of oxygens giving you two of co now this co will combine with oxygen to give you two co2 so multiple things are happening at anode whereas only one thing is happening at cathode so make sure that you keep that in mind moving on to the next one fill in the blanks with the choices given in the brackets metals are good reducing agents non polar covalent compounds are bad conductors of electricity because when you have non polar that means you lack the presence of ions and if there are no ions no heat and electricity will be conducted higher the ph value of the solution the more alkaline it is dash is a white ppt that is soluble in excess of ammonium hydroxide solution answer is silver chloride 
conversion of ethene to ethane is an example of hydrogenation hydrogenation means adding up hydrogen into the compound so that is hydrogenation now next is the energy released when an atom in the gaseous state accepts an electron to form an anion that is electron affinity tendency of an electron to form chains of identical atoms that is catenation the name of the process by which ammonia is manufactured on a large scale that is haber's process a type of salt formed by partial replacement of hydroxyl radicals with an acid radical that is a basic salt the ratio of the mass of certain volume of gas to the same volume of hydrogen measured under the same conditions of temperature and pressure this is vapor density yes of course we have done this question as well so there are multiple questions that uh, i can easily see uh, were discussed either in the important question videos or in the sample papers so i'm really happy with how the paper has come out so far let's move ahead to the next one give the structural uh, formula of the following organic compounds so let's start with the first one so you have two chlorobutane so butane means four carbon so 1 2 3 and 4 two chlorobutane means first of all alkene all are single bonds so no uh, double bonds or triple bonds now at the second carbon you have chlorine so at the second carbon just add chlorine and now balance out all the hydrogens this is your two chlorobutane next is methane null okay so meth means a single carbon so single carbon and al methane null means double bond o so that is it balance all the hydrogens and you'll get your compound Now next is but two ine y n e so but means four one two three four two ine means on the second carbon you have a triple bond so on the second carbon let's say you pick up from this side you have a triple bond no matter which side you put or pick pick up from that is where your triple bond will come out to be and then you just balance out all the hydrogens next is give the IUPAC name of the following organic compounds so the first one that you can see is uh, you have two carbons so meth eth so you have eth and you have coox that's a carboxylic acid so methanoic acid and an because all are single bonds so methanoic acid next is 1 2 3 4 so 4 is but all are single bonds so an and then you have alcohol at the second place because of course you'll be numbering from here so butane to all So your answer will be butane to all. Okay, students, let's move ahead to section B. So in section B, if you read the first question, that is identify the cation. This is from analytical chemistry directly. So let's quickly look at that. So ammonium hydroxide solution, when added to solution B, gives a white precipitate which does not dissolve in excess of ammonium hydroxide solution. That is lead. Your cation is lead. let me write that pb2 plus next is sodium hydroxide solution when added to solution c gives a white ppt which is insoluble in sodium hydroxide so that is calcium so ca2 plus let's quickly move ahead to the next part so we have fill in the blanks choosing the correct answer from the brackets during electrolysis the compound dash in its molten state liberates reddish brown fumes at the cathode at the anode so that is lead bromide so pb br2 next is the ion which could be discharged most readily during electrolysis is copper next is arrange the following as per the instruction given in the brackets so you have aluminum potassium magnesium calcium decreasing order of its reactivity so when we say decreasing order so you start from the highest um, reactive metals so that would be your potassium highest then calcium then uh, magnesium and aluminum so that will be your series for decreasing next is your increasing order of non metallic character so increasing order that means you start with the uh, with the lowest and non metallic character increases as the number of valence electrons increases so if you compare all of these oxygen has the highest number of uh, valence electrons so oxygen goes towards the end from that um uh, we pick up the next one so that will be nitrogen 
carbon and then beryllium so that should be your decreasing order no, sorry increasing order now next is um decreasing order of valence electrons or the number of valence electrons so anything that is more towards the uh, right side of the periodic table will have higher number of valence electrons and anything towards the uh, left side will have lower number of valence electrons so just uh, just write them uh, in the sequence from right to left so if you think about that and you imagine these in the periodic table and you go from right to left you will end up writing fluorine phosphorus silicon and beryllium so that is it now moving on to complete and balance the following equation so you have nh4cl plus coh whole twice that will give you cacl2 plus water plus ammonia i am not balancing the equations you'll do that on your own now next is cuso4 dot uh, sorry cuso4 plus nh4oh gives you cuoh whole twice plus nh4 whole twice so4 now next is copper plus concentrate nitric acid now this student i have told this question a billion times so i hope you all got this correct so copper with concentrated nitric acid will give you copper nitrate so that will be cu no3 whole twice plus nitrogen dioxide plus water and you can balance it out let's move to the next one state a relevant reason for the following hydrogen chloride gas cannot be dried over quick lime so the reason for that is hydrogen chloride is acidic in nature a uh, quick lime is basic in nature so if you try to use the quick lime as a drying agent they will both end up reacting and cause and give you a neutralization reaction so instead of being dried out a reaction will happen therefore we do not use quick lime uh, ammonia gas is not collected over water because of its high solubility in water identify the alloy in each case from the given composition aluminum magnesium uh, manganese and copper that is duralum this is the combination sorry composition for duralum iron nickel chromium carbon this is stainless steel next uh, oh next we have a numerical we'll do this towards the end of the paper let's move to the next part the following questions are pertaining to the lab preparation of ammonia gas from magnesium nitride write a balanced chemical equation for its preparation so uh, the balance equation will be magnesium nitride so mg3n2 plus water will give you mgoh whole twice plus ammonia gas why is this method seldom used because of because of how how expensive this particular method is now next is how do you justify how do you identify the gas form so how can you identify the gas you can bring in a glass rod dipped in hcl gas and bring it near ammonia and that you can see dense white fumes so that would always work so any test of ammonia that you know of that test can be used to identify the gas form all right students uh, let's move ahead all right students let's move ahead on question number 5 so question number 5 let's uh, start from the first part i hope that is visible yeah that is visible now so write one use of the following alloys so the first one is bronze so bronze is used in the manufacture of coins and hardware mounts uh, you can use you can write any of the use that you remember and that is perfectly fine uh, moving ahead to the next one you have fuse metal so fuse metal is used in manufacture of fuses so uh, in connecting uh, that part uh, in an appliance and it can break any time when you have excess current going through the appliance so it acts as a precautionary measure for, uh, measure for uh, saving our appliances from high inflow of current let's move to the next one uh, draw draw the electron dot structure of the following so the first is ammonium ion so this one also i told you that this is highly highly important for ammonium ion what you had to what you had to do was you first have to draw ammonia plus h plus ion and you have to attach it with the lone pair so you have to show the entire thing that is what the marks are for so let's start with uh, making it right here i hope that is visible here so you have nitrogen uh, with one one bond with hydrogen three hydrogen then you have a lone pair okay that is your lone pair you have to mark that that is the lone pair so you mark it as lone pair 
and then you add H plus ion in this. Now H is not bringing in any electron. It's H plus. That means one electron it had, it has been lost. So it's an ion. So H plus ion comes in and that gets attached with the lone pair. So you have H, nitrogen, H and this is your hydrogen attached with the lone pair. Okay, the arrow shows that the lone pair is being shared. So this is your hydronium uh, ammonium ion and you the entire thing will have a positive charge because of the presence of hydrogen there. So this is your ammonium ion. The next is the molecule of nitrogen. Molecule of nitrogen is pretty simple. So uh, you have nitrogen and nit nitrogen. Let me draw it again. Nitrogen and nitrogen and you have a triple bond. So you can draw the uh, electron dot structure in any way that you want. Um, you can also draw it in axis format and then show the sharing like this. So anything that any way that works for you and of course the left out pair you have to show of the electrons. So this is what your nitrogen molecule would look like. Moving ahead to write a balanced chemical equation. So I'm sorry this portion of the paper is not very clear but I hope you can still understand. So the first is ethene from ethanol. So you're trying to make ethene from ethanol. So ethanol is what that is C2H5OH in the presence of concentrated H2SO4 will give you C2H4 plus H2O. So you'll getting ethene plus water. Now next is ethene from calcium carbide. So calcium carbide was CAC2 plus water is being added to that. You get C2H2 plus CaOH whole twice. Then moving on to the last one that is monochloromethane. So what will happen is you have methane. Methane is what? It is 1C and you have 4 hydrogens attached to that. In this you add chlorine. So when you add chlorine, two of the hydrogens will go away and chlorine will take good that place. So you have C, two hydrogens and two chlorines. So this is your monochloroethane. Now moving on to the next one. State the following observations. Uh, study the following observations and name the anions present in each of the reactions. When a crystalline solid P is warmed with concentrated H2SO4 and copper turnings, a reddish brown gas is released you get a nitrate ion i have already taught this so nitrate ion when a few drops of dilute sulfuric acid acid added to salt are you get a moist lead acetate vapor silvery black is being turned so which gas do you get you get hydrogen sulfide gas if hydrogen sulfide gas is coming out that means the anion we're talking about is a sulfide anion so sulfide ion Next is when a few drops of barium nitrate solution is added to salt solution Q, a white precipitate formed which is insoluble in HCl. So we are talking about sulfate ions. Student sulfate. Let's move ahead to the next one. Now next one is definition. So I'll just check it from the book and tell you the definition. What you were supposed to write. Um... Okay, so um, you have the first one as electronegativity and the gay lussacs law of combining volumes. So for electronegativity, you are supposed to write the tendency of an atom in a molecule to attract the shared pair of electrons towards itself is called its electronegativity. The second is gay lussacs law of combining volumes. So when gases react, they do so in volumes which bear a simple ratio to one another and to the volume of the gaseous product provided that the volumes are measured at the same temperature and pressure. So this is your gale law. Let's move on to the next one. The empirical formula of uh, an organic compound CHCl2. Okay, I'll just solve this one right here. So CHCl2. This is your empirical formula. So what will be the weight of this one would be C is 12. Hydrogen is 1. Chlorine is 35.5. So 35.5 times 2. So this is how you calculate that. So if you add this entire thing up, you end up with 84. Okay. So this is your empirical formula weight. And they are looking for its relative molecular weight is given as 168. Okay. So the first thing you always calculate is N. So N will be equal to 168 that is molecular weight 
divided by the empirical formula weight that is 84 so if you do that you get a 2 so once you have a 2 your empirical formula multiplied by m so empirical formula is chcl2 entire thing multiplied by 2 you get c2 h2 cl4 okay let's do let's move on to the next one choose the substances given in the box below to answer the following questions the metal that will not produce hydrogen gas when reacted with dilute acids is copper. It will not produce hydrogen gas. The compound that will produce sulfur dioxide gas when reacted with dilute HCl that is magnesium sulfide. So magnesium sulfide. The solution of this compound produces dirty green precipitate with NaOH that is ferrous sulfate. Dirty green is ferrous sulfate. You lose marks if you write anything else except ferrous. Okay students. Uh, let's move to the next one. State one relevant observation for each of the following cases. The To the copper nitrate solution initially few drops of sodium hydroxide solution is added and then added in access. So when you have copper nitrate and you are adding um, sodium hydroxide you get a blue precipitate which is insoluble in access of ammonium hydroxide that is your observation not ammonium hydroxide sodium hydroxide i'm sorry next is the burning of ammonia in access of oxygen that gives you a greenish yellow flame uh, the third one dry ammonia gas is passed over heated lead oxide so yellow color of lead monoxide uh, is changed to or reduced to a gray metal gray colored lead metal that will be your observation for the third case all right students let's move ahead to question number seven name the following organic compound with same molecular formula but different structural formula are isomers the second group of organic compounds where the successive members follow a regular structural pattern successive compounds differ by ch2 group so this is homologous series let's move to the next one give reasons for the following ionization potential decreases down the group what is ionization potential an ability for an atom to become an ion and how do we do that by removal of electron correct so what happens is that as we are coming down the group the number of shells increases and the difference between the center of the nucleus and the outermost electron also increases. So it becomes easier for the electron to jump out from the outermost shell. Therefore ionization potential decreases as we go down the group. Then next is ionic compounds do not conduct electricity in solid state. The main reason for that is that in solid state we have lack of ions. So ionic compounds have strong electrostatic forces of attraction and uh, they become, uh, they are very closely bound and therefore you do not have any ions present for the conduction of electricity. Uh, now next is calculate the percentage of phosphorus in the fertilizer super, super phosphate. Okay, that's easy. So first we'll calculate the total mass of this uh, particular fertilizer. Then we calculate how much phosphorus we are putting in and then we uh, find the percentage so let's quickly do that so first we'll find the total uh, mass of the fertilizer so that will be if we calculate that from the given thing so that will be 40 plus 2 okay i hope it is visible now so that will be 40 plus 2 plus and then in the bracket it would be 31 2 in the bracket you will have 2 plus 31 plus 64 so if you quickly add that up on the calculator right now that would give me 234 grams and mass of phosphorus in this is so you have C2 so phosphorus is 31 so 2 times 31 so that is 62 so that is how much you have phosphorus if you are calculating the percentage that would be 60 sorry not 64 62 that would be 62 over 234 times 100 so if we quickly do that 
that is giving me 26.5 gram okay write the empirical formula of c8h18 it's very simple you just need to uh, remove any common numbers from that so if i just cancel it out by 2 i end up with 4 and a 9 so my answer becomes c4h9 now next is answer the following questions with reference to electro refining of copper so let's start with that what is um what is the anode made of so anode is made of impure copper next is what do you observe at cathode so at cathode we observe that copper will get deposited okay third is write the reaction taking place at the cathode so what reaction will take place so cu2 plus plus two electrons gives you cu next is arrange the following according to the instructions given in the brackets uh, c2 h2 c3 h fix yeah that c3 h fix so what you will do is that uh, for carbon you know it is 12 then the form the atom the molecular weight it is 12 and for hydrogen it is 2 so what you will do is you will just quickly calculate for all of them so for example in this case it is 24 plus 2 so 26 and you do the same thing so if i quickly do that here so that will be 42 this will be 16 and this will be 28 and now you can arrange them and you are arranging them in an increasing order so let me come back so if you are arranging them in the increasing order as they asked so you will start from the right hand side so that will go to c3 h6 c2 h4 c2 h2 and then ch4 and then you can put in the arrows now next is the order of preferential discharge at the cathode now this list is anyways given in the book so you directly pick that up from there so your answer for now will be ag plus copper 2 plus zn2 plus and then na so this is your uh, complete uh, series now next is a difference between the following pairs based on the criteria given in the brackets cane sugar and hydrated copper sulfate so what happens in cane sugar is when you put in concentrated sulfuric acid uh, you get a hard black uh, sorry you get a black porous mass that is uh, created whereas when you put it in hydrated copper sulfate you lose the water of crystallization so what is your observation in that case uh, the blue color of the solution will turn to so you have hydrated copper sulfate so the entire thing is looking blue in color but since the water of crystallization goes out this entire compound turns to white amorphous looking that is what is the major difference now next is sulfuric acid and hydrochloric acid type of salts formed so when we talk about sulfuric acid so it can form a normal salt as well as an acid salt whereas when we talk about hydrochloric acid it will only form normal salt let's move to the next one convert the following reactions into balanced chemical equations ammonia to nitric oxide using oxygen and platinum catalyst okay that is simple so you are using ammonia so that is NH3 ammonia plus oxygen which will give you NO plus water and this is happening in the presence of platinum at 800 degree Celsius. Now next is sodium hydroxide so NaOH uh, plus uh, sodium okay 2 sodium sulfate using sulfuric acid so H2SO4 giving you sodium sulfate so Na2SO4 plus water. Now next is ferrous sulfide to hydrogen sulfide using hydrochloric acid. So ferrous sulfide is FES plus hydrochloric acid will give you ferrous chloride. Sorry, sulfide. Yeah, ferrous chloride plus H2S, hydrogen sulfide gas. Let's move to the next one. Choose the answer from the list that fits the description best. So in this case, what is happening is you have a compound which undergoes thermal dissociation so NH4 Cl goes through some thermal decomposition and amphoteric oxide majority of the cases the common examples would be zinc oxide or aluminium oxide but lead oxide is also an amphoteric oxide. Then the last is a compound which is a non-electrolyte. So non-electrolyte will be a CCl4 and why is that? That is because of lack of presence of ions because it only contains molecules and no ions at all. Oh, and then, yeah, of course, we have a numerical left. Let's come on that numerical. 
that was question number four right here okay so i'll just solve this numerical right here wherever i get space so what is happening in this case is you have the ratio so ratio is 2 is to 7 is to 4 is to 6 correct what has given to you they have given to you um ethane so that is 2 2 1 is given so when you are using one of that that means 7 by 2 oxygen and 4 by 2 carbon dioxide and 6 by 2 water is coming out correct divide everything by 2 now when you are using 80 ml of ethane so when i am using 1 ml so that is giving me 7 by 2 this is the ratio not ml but the ratio when i'm using 80 i'm getting 7 by 2 times 80 of what of oxygen so if that happens you get 280 ml how much are you left with you're left with you had 300 you're left with 20 ml so this much oxygen is used 20 ml is left unused so that is there next is carbon dioxide because they are talking about the resultant gaseous mixture so in resultant gaseous mixture along with oxygen you will also have carbon dioxide so for carbon dioxide what will happen you have 80 so this will become 4 by 2 times 80 so that is nothing but 160 so 160 ml of carbon dioxide you need to write both the things and since they are asking find the composition of the resultant gaseous mixture when measured at room temperature you have to combine to the two together also write them separately combine them together and give the resultant mixture quantity all right icsc warriors so this is where we conclude today's session i tried my best to make it a fast video and go through all the questions really quick if you still have any doubts and concerns you can definitely reach out to me either on the telegram channel or in the comment box below or you can write me an email at psclassesicsc at gmail.com. Thank you so much for all the love and support you have shown in the last few days and overall since the channel has been built. And I highly appreciate it and I will make sure that I keep serving and keep making new and even better content for you students to score better. So thank you so much and we will catch up in the next session.